Welcome to the CMRTA Finance Committee meeting, Wednesday, May 11th, 10 a.m. Uh, it is now 10.08, so I'll call this meeting to order. I determine we have a quorum by the presence of myself, Mr. Lawson, Dr. Morris. Um, I'll entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. Uh, so moved. Okay, here's a second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Looks like Mr. Lawson's still he's in. going to join. Okay, he's yeah, in. He's good, in. good. All right. Um, I saw him and then he went away and he came back. So <laughs> we had a quorum and then lost it for a brief second. It's, it's back now. Okay. So uh, I entertain a motion to adopt the minutes from the April meeting. Everybody had a chance to look at those. Any corrections? No, I've looked at them. Uh, uh, so moved. Okay. Second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Hear no opposition. Um, matters reverted to the Board of Directors. Um, I think just a note there that the service committee will continue to review the question of fare free based on um, or other ways, I think, to to um, um, deal with this issue of inflation and the impact on riders. Uh, but at, that, at this time, that question, I think, is before the service committee, correct? Correct. Right. Okay. Nothing else referred from the board, right? Okay, so item number five, uh, Ms. Andrews, the monthly financial report through March 2022. Good morning, everyone. So I'd like to call your attention to page nine. Page nine has our financial highlights. I am reporting on the month of March 2022. That brings us to 75% complete for our fiscal year. At this point, we have um, a net income of about 1.23 million. Our total revenue collected to date is about 3.48 million. And again, that's 75% of nine twelfths of our budget. Budget number there is um, uh, due to our mid-year review of 48.2 million. We are 79% of what we budgeted for the year. Total expenses um, paid out. 2.54 million. Leon Howard. Join the meeting. Welcome, Representative Howard. There he is. Welcome, Ms. Uh, Representative Howard. Yes, sir. How are you all? Good, good. Roz was, had just kind of started the uh, regular monthly financial report, so I'll ask her to Continue. And Representative Howard, that's page nine of your finance packet. Yes, I'm, down, uh -huh. I'm right. down. I'm down to the part of pay to date to our contract our, uh, operator, RACP does. Through the month of March for this year, uh, we paid them a little over uh, 27.3 million. Oh, 3 million, let's say that. Following that is again the breakout of some of those. Um, expenses you guys wanted to see. They say in this, um, I know this was the request from some years ago. So if you guys continue to want to see this, I can put it in. If there's something you want extra to this section or delete it all together, just let me know. Because again, most of this is in the check register when it comes out to the board. The past donations, again, um, where I just put in our year to date total, nothing new for the month of March or just still letting you know where we are with that because it, again, it was a concern for a few board members. Below that is our total penny collections, no new collections for the month of March. So there I have what we collected up to from inception, um, a little over 158 million. For this fiscal year, we got payments in July, February, July, November, and February. And I just build them out another 6 million, um, what's this month, for May. And that is the end of my report. If you guys have any questions, I am happy to enlighten you on anything you may have concerns with. All right, thank you. 
uh, Andrews. Any questions about the finance report? Uh, none here. Very good. Um, one brief question that I think kind of uh, will inform our budget discussion later. Can you say a little bit about the timing of capital purchases? I see that we've budgeted a lot that we haven't actually received or at least haven't expensed yet. And that when we get to the budget, we're taking out a lot of that capital budget. Do we anticipate those capital items this fiscal year? So are you speaking to a line item in general? Or yeah, let's see. Um, sorry, I should have been. Um, and are you speaking revenue side or expense side? Expense side. Expense side. I see the revenue. It's, it's on the expense side that it looks like we haven't. Um, hold on just one second. I'm sorry. I should have. So like um, I'm looking at page, I guess this is it's page 14 of the packet. Mm -hmm. You get onto the line items in the, under the capital expense section, actual year to date, you know, we're showing like 300,000 in total capital expenses on a nine and a half million dollar budget. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm trying to find. So, and I'll let Michelle chime in where it's doing, but the bulk of those where you see are for shelters and shelter acquisition and then CapEx. So I know with the shelter, again, we, it's including some of Lucia's Road and some of the bigger shelters. So what we normally put there is what Michelle has available for this fiscal year. So that, and then where we get to mid-year, we kind of adjust from there whether we're going to get that point or not. And CapEx, um, Michelle. I think CapEx was the university buses, Mark, wasn't it? Almost $5 million budget year to date. Yeah, I may have to check into that one. The university buses, I think, what was a, yeah, that should have been the university buses, which something, well, and I guess to explain the way it works. So CapEx would have been the university buses. So it would have, it should have fallen into that line, but then we have to move them up to the asset account. So it goes in there and then it comes out of there. But the budget line still has to stay, I guess, to kind of show that we had the money for that. Okay. So, and I've always tried to find a way of, around it because like I said, if you look and it looked like we didn't expend anything, but the buses come in and we expense them and then we have to move them up to the asset category in essence, moving them from the expense. So it kind of zeroes out the expense. Okay, it's, it doesn't show it. So we're not seeing, um, we're not really seeing it anymore on the income statement. It's right. Okay. It, it's showing. So I think we might, you know, what we might be missing is really how does, what do we actually spend on these versus um, our budget? And it's hard for us to see that if it's, if it's once it's capitalized. Right. So if you okay. can think of a way to help me try and figure this out, because it's always been a question, even when we had Chuck, you know, it goes there and right. then we have to move it to the asset. How do we still record it to show that it actually happened? Okay. All right. We can talk about that maybe. Okay. Some point. Okay. Any other questions for Roz? All right. Um, hearing none. I think that brings us to item number six, which is a DBA, DBE update from Dr. Prince. Morning. Morning. Uh, the DBE report is found on pages 26 through 29 of the finance packet. And on page 26 through 27, just a summary and a quick snapshot of all vendors for DBE goals. And the goals are basically about the same as they were last month. As of March, at the end of March, the company had paid approximately 31 million to vendors with DBE goals. And, and of this amount, approximately 7.9 million were paid to DBEs. And this calculates to approximately 25.6 or 26% if rounded. Uh, in comparison to our overall agency goal of 25%. Now, there are two DBEs that I will be adding to the report once I start receiving invoices. They are DISA and PJ Noble and Associates. DISA will be assisting with our May 23rd outreach event in the Lower Richland area, and PJ Noble and Associates helping us with our public participation when it comes to our federal DBE goal methodology. 
So those two uh, DBE firms will be appearing in, in my future reports as I receive invoices. Also on pages 28 through 29 is relevant to our DBE contractor, RATP Dale, and their payments to DBEs. On page 28 uh, reflects from the start of the contract, July 1, 2020, and it goes up through March of 2022. Uh, the cumulative goal uh, as of March 20, as of March 2022 is approximately 22.8%. And I rounded that to 23, when I rounded it came to 23%. On page 29 just reflects the current fiscal year, which started July 1st of 2021. And it goes up through March uh, 31, 2022. And the, uh, the overall goal is about 18%. And in your report, I showed 17.8. I went ahead and used one decimal place, but I rounded it to 18%. And as uh, RATP Day up indicated in previous meetings, they have already started working with DBEs to increase the current fiscal year goal. They have already done the process now finalizing the contract with TCS uh, for the ordering of tires and supplies. And this will help to increase their DBE goal for the current fiscal year. And this contract is currently in place until December 31st. At that point, they wanted to revisit and see if they need to continue uh, with that contract. And also, they have interacted with Apple Business, which is a company that provides our supplies. Apple Business had indicated that they were going through a transition period, but now they are ready to start um, back service. And RATP Dev should be ordered from them real soon. And there's one other DBE firm that they're working with. Uh, and this firm has been assisting them with service planning and they are hoping that uh, they will have them on board and everything in place real soon. And as I mentioned also during the last meetings that we are also in the process of updating our federal DBE goal, which will expire on September 30th. And we have until August 1st to submit the new goal. We are working on one component of that is to have a public participation meeting. We have to get feedback from DBEs and other community individuals that may have uh, any information to assist with the goal. And this is this event is planned for June 16th. We want to have a this event after our May 23rd event. So we're looking at June 16th from 12 a.m., I mean 12 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. And this event will be in the large conference room where we are now. And we will also have the capability for individuals to dial in. But I'll be giving more information at our next meeting. Uh, this ends the report unless there are questions. Very good, thank you. Questions for Dr. Prince? Uh, yes, uh, I have one. Uh, Dr. Prince, if you look on page 29, I see the um, goal percentage achieved is 17.8. Uh, 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 it has been 18 over the last three months. And uh, I have been bringing that uh, to your attention and, and also uh, RATP Deb attention. Uh, it seems to me they're not doing as well as they've done before. And before uh, they were not reaching the goal. So uh, I think I heard you said that they're gonna work on this and hopefully uh, the next time this report comes out, that we'll see an improvement. Is that uh, correct? Uh, what I was going to say is that they have already entered into, uh, they have made changes to their contract with TCS Transport Care Services. Uh, so they just, I guess, they just finalized that contract. So it'll be in a few months ahead before we really see any impact in terms of the uh, expenses in that particular contract. But what I did on this particular uh, area, I've been reporting 18%. So I just rounded the numbers in the past and what I did here so that you can see some movement. I went and added one decimal point. So this is, if you round this one, it would be 18% as well. But they have already started at, um, doing things to increase the goal for the current fiscal year. It's just that this, is, this report is as of March. So it just won't appear until our future reports. Okay, uh, if you if you will just give us the actual numbers instead of rounding them, okay. um, and then 
also, uh, what do you uh, think is going to happen over the next month and a half? Well, matter of fact, uh, the next month, yeah, month and a half is a little over a month and a half because the fiscal year ends June the 30th. Okay. I'm looking at, um, with our, they just enter, RATP Dev just entered into the contract with uh, Transport Care Services. And we are in the month of uh, what May now. So next month will be April. So I don't know if I'll see any activity or any movement until we have the May report. Until I'm reporting for the May period. So it's just that we're going to get to the point, we're going to be in the, when we get to June, we'll just be reporting April activities. So it will be a few months beyond the fiscal year when we actually see the activity, but it'll be for the previous months. So is it fair to say uh, by the end of this fiscal year, they probably will not achieve their goal? Well, it will be for the period just that I'll be reporting. Uh, I'll be reporting uh, later past the fiscal year. I understand that. I understand what you said about uh, three months or so, but I'm asking at the end of this fiscal year, is it fair to say that they would not have achieved their goal? They would have achieved their cumulative goal. I'm not for sure because I, I don't know the dollar amount that uh, they have entered into with uh, TCS. I don't know that amount yet, so I haven't been able to go in and do a, um, a, a estimated calculation. But as for their cumulative goal, they are on track. So their cumulative goal is only 20.08%, 20, 20 and they are currently at 22.8 or close to 23%. So on the cumulative goal, they are okay on that end. It's just that when we just look at the cumulative, when we look at the, the uh, fiscal year, it's just that they may not meet the goal or they may be close to it. Yeah. But in the past, I always look at the fiscal year, not the cumulative goal. Because the cumulative goal could go, if they're here five years, five years. And we don't want to get that far behind. Yes. Well, that's why we're, we're tracking both now. But it just that according to our contract, I guess we had set up where when they reported, they reported on a cumulative year project goal. So at the time that we did the contract, it was it, when they submitted their goal, it was based on overall. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Dr. Prince, I had a question. Okay. Yep. So uh, piggybacking off Dr. Morris, I guess if they do not meet their cumulative, I'm sorry, if they do not meet their fiscal goal, um, what happens? Well, we don't have anything in the contract regarding their fiscal year goal. The goal is based on cumulative. So I was thinking that we were always just looking at the, the uh, fiscal year just to see where they were. And because we were saying that if they start going down in their fiscal year goal, then it may impact their cumulative goal. Okay, so that's an internal measure that we, as the, as the comment, put in place? Uh, yes. Okay, all right. And then um, my second question, you referenced earlier before Dr. Prince, uh, I'm sorry, before uh, Dr. Morris asked his question, um, you were talking about the May, I think you said 23rd and then June 16th uh, meetings uh, as a EBE. Can you elaborate on that a little bit more? Okay, let me see, Ms. Bino Reed, did you want to talk more about the May 23rd outreach event in Lower Richland? Um, that's not a DBE event. Though. It's, not, it's not a DBE event, it's just that a DBE is kind of like assisting us. Oh, okay. So actually what Dr. Prince is referring to is um, the presentation that was made at the past board meeting with Diane Sumter and Disa. And they are a DBE assisting us in community outreach in Lower Richland to ascertain um, what additional services may be needed or if we need to explain more about the services that are already in that area and how to access them. So is this a DBE forum to educate potential future DBEs on doing business with the comment? Is that my understanding? Uh, not, not on May 23rd. Not on May 23rd, but on May on June 16th, it is a meeting for DBEs. Okay, on June the 16th. Okay, so I'm getting the dates mixed up. Sorry. So June the 16th 
it will be a open forum, so to speak, to educate companies on potentially becoming uh, DBEs with the comic. Right. Uh, and, and the reason why we're putting that in place, and it's really a federal regulation that once when you sub, when you prepare your goal and the goal is submitted every three years. So one requirement is that we reach out to DBEs and others who may have uh, some information about DBEs. So we are planning on having, we're going to talk about what the company is doing, some potential opportunities in the future. We have also asked SCDOT to come in and talk about certification. And um, so that is planned from 12 o'clock until uh, 1.30 p.m. Uh, one, yeah, 1.30 p.m. And we have also asked RATP Day to also come in and talk about future opportunities they may have for DBEs. Okay. Hey, Pam, are we doing any outreach for that? So the community and these uh, local companies are tracking this event? Uh, yes, actually, um, Juliet from my team is working with um, Dr. Prince on that. And we have started working on pulling together the individuals we will invite or extend an invitation. We were trying not, we didn't want to confuse the two events. So we was trying to wait until after May 23rd before we really started with the marketing of that event. Okay. And I heard you say that you're going to reach out to the individuals that you wanted to invite. How does that work? Right. Cause I thought it was an open forum for whoever has potential services um, that we may be interested in. Everybody should get an invite. Yes. Well, yes, we'll have, we'll invite, we'll make it an open forum, but we also will look at, say, for example, on our federal side, if we know of DVEs that are already certified, we would just extend it and make sure that they are aware of it as well. Okay, so, so um, great, Dr. Prince, but I, I want to be clear uh, about something, right? I don't think that we should just focus on the individual companies that are already certified, right? Because they, they, they have the cheat code. They understand how to get in the system. Uh, yes. What I make sure is that the individuals that do not have the information, the individual companies that don't know that this is a thing or the process to become certified, I want to ensure that they get a fair opportunity to become certified. We understand, yeah. We're gonna invite both. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. The chair, I have another sure. question. Sure. Um, after after um, uh, hearing from Mr. Larson, um, it's, it's, are you saying, uh, Dr. Prince, that um, RATP Dev is accountable for the uh, cumulative uh, percentage and not the fiscal percentage? Yes, at the time that the contract was written, we asked them to submit their DBE goal. And it was based on the total project. So when they submitted their goal of the 20.08, so we've been tracking it from a cumulative perspective. Uh, but when it comes to the fiscal year, we've been doing that internal. We don't have anything in our contract saying that we will track of that they are required to submit, submit a fiscal year goal. Um, even if they are not at 20.06% at the end of the fiscal year, they are okay because um, we are holding them accountable for uh, five years? From the start of the contract, they are at the, they are at the, they, they have reached the 20.08%, uh, 20.06%. So I, I've been going back to the beginning of their contract. So at the beginning of the contract, they are meeting their goal. Okay, but we are not holding them accountable for the fiscal year. Uh, that's correct. That's more like an internal um, process, an internal review that we're doing. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought it was um, every fiscal year they need to meet the 20.06%. Uh, and you're saying that's not necessarily correct. Right. According to our contract, we put in there, we've been doing it on a cumulative basis. So we didn't, we didn't specify it had to be by fiscal year. So I've been based the track. That's why I give you both. When I give my report, I give it to you from the start of the contract. Then I also give it to you on the fiscal year. But according to our contract, it's based on the cumulative total of what that cumulative percentage is. So at the end of the June 30th, or at, even as of March, 
of 2022, they were at close to 23%. So they are achieving their goal according to the contract. Okay, I'm glad you explained that. Uh, although I don't think uh, that's what that our board intends, uh, because at the end of the five years, they could not reach their goal and leave here uh, not reaching their goal. And I was thinking that was why we were looking at it from a uh, current fiscal year so that we would keep them on track. We would be able to look and see if they had started slipping then that's when we would make sure that they go in and do something to ensure that they achieve the goal by the end of the, of the, of the contract period. All right, okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, any other questions? Um, I, I will say for my part, I've been thinking about this issue of cumulative versus fiscal year for the last several months as it's come up and just kind of for our own internal thinking for future reference as we go to a couple of years, look at a new contract, I think it might be helpful for us to think in terms of a cumulative goal and then a um, not to fall below, you know, so cumulative goal is X, but not to fall below Y in a given fiscal year. That might be a helpful way for us to think of it in the future, um, you know, if we wish to go that route. I think there has been a that lot of sounds, That sounds good, Mr. Chair. Yeah, just just to, to put on our back burner until until we have a chance to kind of address that contractually. But I think, you know, I think what we're doing by looking at it continually and by fiscal year and raising the red flag when things go down below what we think is a um, a number that allows them to maintain their goal. Overall, you know, I think I think we're doing so. So while we, we're, you know, there's not a explicit contractual um, remedy or anything on a fiscal year basis, we are alarming, not alarming, alerting them to, you know, when things go low. So I think I think that's helpful. All right. Any other questions for Dr. Prince? All right, so the next item, um, discussion and action items in uh, 7A, which is the fiscal year 23 proposed budget. Take it, that'll be Ms. Andrews. Well, correct, hello again. Hello. So I bring your attention starting at page 30. So I'm hoping you all had a chance to review um, the proposed budget and have your questions ready for me to answer. So at this point, I'll just kind of give you my summation. The budget here in front of you is for the upcoming fiscal year, 22-23. The overall change for the budget from current fiscal year to next is actually a decrease. That decrease is about 12%, um, which equates to about 5.6 million. So I, I attached it. I tried to sum it down so it didn't take up too much time. So at this point, I will open the floor to any questions you may have. All right, everybody have uh, access to that budget. Questions for Roz? It's on pages 31 and 32 of the packet. 31. So, I'll, I'll jump in with a question to start us off, if that's okay with everybody. Um, I just want to kind of piggyback on the com comment I had earlier, which is that um, it it looks like we're taking out anticipated revenue and expenses for CapEx, correct? Capital items. Correct. This year and it's actually, the amount is almost exactly the amount that the budget goes down. So, you know, while other line items are kind of going up and down on a net basis, the really, the change in budget from year to year really is because of the removal of capital items. Right. And no, no, or mainly CapEx or purchases of buses. That's what we put in that line item. Okay. So is it just the case that we don't have that? We're not kind of in a cycle right now, point in the cycle right now where we just don't need? We're, we're not anticipating purchasing any buses this fiscal year, except for the hydrogen, that whole project there. And Michelle can speak more on that timeline if you guys are interested um, in how that's gonna go. 
Yeah, the hydrogen and the electric buses that we're getting through the NOLO grant, we are going to have to pay a little bit of match for that, but those will not be here this coming fiscal year. There's a large lead on that. So that'll be in the upcoming year or the, the year after next. Right. Any other budget questions for fiscal year 23? And I apologize for not numbering the line, which would get people to go where you're referring to Andy, but, but yeah, CapEx is normally left to purchase of buses. The other thing that jumped out at me, Roz, is professional services. Pretty significant increase in anticipated professional services. Right. Say a little about that. So professional services or Again, we're going to have to hire some out. If you're a member in the board meeting for this new intermodal center, and sure. then yeah, mainly for that, we're going to have to get more people for help with construction and getting of that. Um, from engineering to the three P or P three lady that you guys referred to, um, letting the lawyers get to help along with that, and anything else associated with the super stop across the street. Other questions for Roz on the budget? Staff, everybody feel comfortable with what Roz has proposed here? Michelle? Just to let everybody know, it wasn't a, it wasn't a, a me venture. I sit right. with, <laughs> I use it. It's, it's well, collaborative, use it. I'm sure. <laughs> yes, yeah, collaborative with me, um, Leroy, Michelle, and Crystal. And we do reach out to other departments just to kind of see what their needs are. So I think for the majority of those that are in attendance are already aware of what the budget line items look like. Because again, Michelle drives the money in. So we start with her as to what has been awarded to us in fiscal years and then we work from there. And I take it also well, that the executive director and um, yes. director of operations have been very yes. involved as, as well. Okay. Yes. Dr. Morris, I think I heard you. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, this is Leroy. And, oh, Leroy. Uh, just wanted to, to comment, I think, on our budget process this year. And I can especially speak for my, myself. Uh, I think uh, with the involvement of the complete staff, and as Roz mentioned, the different departments, we kind of go back and forth at different times, just challenging each other on what we're doing or what, what we see and what issues we may see coming up. And uh, I think through the process that we use and just having uh, the staff completely involved. It also gave staff an understanding to understand what we have to do as an agency to be uh, physically responsible. And I think that also is a good developmental process for our staff because of how we interconnect and work together and how what we do affects each other. Uh, I think this year of going through the budgeting process, uh, a lot of things, even with the amount of time I've been here, the things that I've picked up on and understand from different areas and especially you know, the, the federal side and, and understanding that. So um, uh, it was a good exercise for staff. And I think it, it seems like each year as we do this, uh, hopefully we're getting better and more responsible. And more than anything, it's just being physically responsible for our, uh, for, for our huge responsibility at, at, as you look at, at the budget. And I think also too, and I also always uh, mention to staff about listening to the finance uh, committee, because I think it helps pull everything together or why we're making certain decisions in certain meetings, because uh, when it comes down to the, to the finance, uh, it, you, you know, we have to be held accountable there. And uh, it's just been, to me, a good exercise, I think, for staff this year and having everybody uh, involved. Very good. Thank you for those, those comments. Any, any other questions from committee members? Uh, I don't have any questions now, but I do uh, need to talk with Ms. Andrews about uh, uh, like professional service and some of the others. And I could uh, do that um, uh, later. Okay. So, go ahead, uh, Roz, I think. 
No, I was just saying, okay, I'm, I'm here, Dr. Mars, when you're ready. Okay. Uh, procedurally, okay, thank you. we are uh, just being asked to recommend this to the full board at this point, right? Correct. That's where I was going to say yes. So my recommendation is if you guys are approved, approve this for submission to the board for overall approval. Okay. Uh, so moved. Okay, got a motion. Uh, here a second. Uh, I'll second. second. Oh, uh, Mr. Lawson, I think seconded. Yeah. Uh, Okay. Any further okay. discussion? Okay. Um, all in favor of recommending this to the to the full board? Uh, I guess I'll, do, uh, I'll go through. Uh, Mr. Lawson. Yes. Uh, Dr. Morris. Yes. Uh, Rep Representative Howard. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, and I'm a yes as well. So unanimous uh, recommendation of the fiscal 23 budget to the full board. Thank you. All right, no, thank you. Thanks to staff for your hard work. I can attest that it's a busy time right now, budgeting. <laughs> um, all right, number item number eight, legal contractual personnel. Doesn't look like there's any items for us to discuss unless I hear otherwise from staff or doesn't sound like it, okay. So given that, unless there's anything else for the good of the committee, uh, we'll hand a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. Very good. All in favor, aye. 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 Okay. Thank you, productive meeting. Have a good day. All right. Alrighty.